Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In one of our previous video, we discussed about pituitary adenoma. And we also learned that the treatment of choice predominantly is surgical excision of the tumor, which is done either through the nose, that is transnasal, transphenoidal approach, or sometimes by conventional craniotomy, that is opening of the skull cap. Now in this video, let's discuss about the non-surgical treatment or treatment of pituitary adenoma using medicines. To know more about this, make sure you watch this video till the end. As discussed previously, pituitary adenoma can be divided into microadenoma, macroadenoma and giant pituitary adenoma depending on its size. And we also learned that depending on whether the adenoma secretes hormones or not, it can be divided into non-hormone secreting pituitary adenoma and hormone secreting pituitary adenoma. You may think that non-hormone secreting pituitary adenomas are less troublesome compared to the hormone secreting ones because there are no effects of the excess hormones. And microadenomas are less dangerous compared to macroadenomas because they are smaller in size. But the reality may not exactly be the same. Most of the time, non-hormone secreting pituitary microadenomas may not even get detected as they do not usually cause any symptoms. However, if they get detected while getting an MRI brain for some other purpose, so-called incidentalomas, they do not require any surgical therapy. But they need to be followed up regularly with regular MRI brain because they can grow in size with time. If microadenomas cause symptoms, then they are more likely to be hormone secreting ones and cause symptoms related to excess of hormones in the body. And for this reason, they need to be excised surgically. Macroadenomas pose a risk to eyesight by compressing the visual pathways that is optic nerve and optic tract and hence need to be excised surgically unless they are pretty far from the visual pathway in which case they can be monitored closely if they are not operated. But the main category of macroadenoma or sometimes even giant pituitary adenoma which are most of the time managed without surgery are so-called prolactinoma or prolactin secreting pituitary adenoma. Now let's discuss about this condition in detail. Prolactin is a hormone secreted by the anterior pituitary by the cells called as lactotrophs whose main function in humans is production of milk by the mammary glands. Of course along with other functions too. Now, this production of prolactin by the lactotrophs is inhibited by dopamine which reaches the anterior pituitary through the pituitary stalk. In addition to stimulating the mammary glands for the production of milk, prolactin also has an inhibitory effect on the gonadotrophs or the hormones which act on the ovaries and testes. That is why in prolactinoma where there is excess of prolactin in the body, Patients usually have amenorrhea galactoria. Amenorrhea means stoppage of menses and galactoria is abnormal secretion of milk by the mammary glands in females. That is why this condition is detected earlier in females compared to males. The typical levels of prolactin in prolactinoma is more than 200 and sometimes it can be as high as 4000 to 5000. If prolactinoma is proven, then the initial treatment of choice is medical and not surgical excision. These prolactin secreting cells or lactotrophs are inhibited by drugs like bromocriptin and cabergolin. As mentioned previously, lactotrophs are inhibited by dopamine. Cabergolin and bromocriptin are ergot derivatives having similar action as dopamine and act on the dopamine receptors to inhibit the lactotrophs. Once the treatment is started, patients usually respond well and the size of the prolactinoma shrinks. And the results start to become obvious in about 2-3 to three weeks after starting the treatment. However, there are a few conditions where surgical therapy may have to be considered even for prolactinoma. These are the indications for surgery in case of prolactinoma. These indications will be discussed in detail in one of the upcoming videos. A small point to note here is what is called as stock effect. The normal levels of prolactin are usually less than 30. If there is a non-hormone secreting pituitary macroadenoma or hormone secreting macroadenoma secreting any hormone other than prolactin, 
there can still be marginal raise of prolactin to a level anywhere between 30 to 200. Now, the reason why it happens is as discussed previously, prolactin has a predominantly inhibitory effect by dopamine which reaches the pituitary through the stalk. As the adenoma grows in size, it compresses the stalk and removes this inhibitory effect leading to slight increase in the production of prolactin. This increase in the production of prolactin usually does not exceed 200 and this is called as stock effect. Hence, rise of prolactin to a level less than 200 is usually not indicative of prolactinoma but is just a stock effect. So, these were a few important points about prolactinoma or prolactin secreting pituitary adenoma. I hope this video was informative to you. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family and for more health and wellness related videos, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.